Welcome to the Epic Mad Podcast, where we let our curiosities and theories run wild and sometimes talk relevant news. I'm Josiah, and with me, my two friends and co-hosts, Ben, and we have a surprise guest with us tonight, Joseph. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. How are you guys doing? (laughs) I'm hanging in there. I'm doing horrible, but besides that, I'm doing great. That sucks. You know... (laughs) I bet you know. Yeah, I bet you I know who else is doing horrible right now. It's probably Michael. Okay, let me just start off by saying this. Okay, last week Ben wasn't here because yep. he was on vacation. Because yep, you know Ben needs his monthly vacation or whatever. And um, you know, it's 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 what it is. It's totally fine. Mike yep. was giving Ben so much crap last week. He was just roasting him. Ben's never here. He's never on this podcast. And next thing you know, who isn't here? Michael. Oh. Michael. Classic case of and, the old And I just want to say we should really roast the crap out of Michael today. Because yeah. Because the reason Michael's not here is far more inexcusable <laughs> than the reason I wasn't here. For real. Go and ahead, Ben. I no, I'm not I'm not gonna be one to tell that oh, story. Wow. Okay. I'm, gonna throw, well. I'm, I'm gonna be the better man than Michael. I'm gonna be the bigger guy. I'm not gonna throw him under the bus. Wow. That's that's huge. That's huge of you, Ben. Good job. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, but he's, he disappoints me. Yeah. Not much, well, I will say. You're probably not the only person he's disappointing, so. Nope, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. But yeah, anyway. Uh, but yeah, so um, Mike was, you know, last week was talking about how he's always here. He's always here. Always. Never and misses. That doesn't, look like, that doesn't look like Mike down there at the bottom of the screen. No, I mean, a few <laughs> weeks ago when Mike also wasn't here, it didn't look like Mike down there at the bottom of the screen, so. I'm but you know what? The power of transformation is real. <laughs> <laughs> or you just have a guess, bro. But you know what? I you know what? I kind of enjoy this because it, it gives Joseph an excuse to come on and exactly uh, a little bit of a break from Michael, who annoys the living daylights out of me. Yeah, day. I mean for you, that's oh. definitely a break because no, it's always a huge break. Uh big roast vibes. <laughs> big roast. He never stops going after you. <laughs> no, he doesn't ever. And there's literally half the time there's no good reason for it either. Yeah, he just makes like, up shit a lot of the time yeah. to go <laughs> after just, you with. So what he does. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, you know, Michael's a disappointment, and yep. that's fine. You know, so, we all are disappointing at sometimes in our yeah. lives. And in Michael's case, he's disappointed me and a lot of other people. <clears throat> I'm sure, you know, there's going to be a day like, uh, you know, maybe five years from now where I'm not going to be here on the on the podcast one week and five years from you guys now. are going to just roast me. You guys are going to be like, Josiah is never here. But secretly, oh, send me an invite. I'll be the first one to start roasting. Secretly, I've it's known in, you the longest actually, out of these, the, uh, the three, if you count my. Yeah. Secretly, it is actually in Josiah's five-year plan not to be here in five years for one day just to see what happens. <laughs> It'll be fun. It'll be fun to see what you guys like, what come a mock with interview when where I ask here. you, where do you see yourself in five years, Mr. Swanson? Not Dead. here. <laughs> That's with morbid. riddled with cancer morbid? and dying. I don't know. Uh, you did not get the job because we need to have someone alive to work this position. <laughs> just do a full well, fake interview. You're like, I guess I'll apply like, f- alternatively to just- a graveyard or something instead maybe wow. i mean hey or you could like work in a morgue or something it could be like yeah. that uh that rave yard that we had for our fallen game oh we my goodness that. it makes me sad every time i think about that because i feel so sad many great concepts of... were coming together and stuff yeah and, you know joe and i were trying and ben wasn't and <laughs> well well i i just want to i feel just somewhat bad there. about it but it gave you a whole experience in in uh unreal and like honestly like i i still think those skills are like to arguably always useful true yeah that is to be a fair good point. I, uh... and, and you did accomplish a lot and like to be honest you pretty much did it all by yourself so that was pretty cool it's true just is, is he's a grind, grind. He, he's a grinder he's a grinder that's for sure yeah yeah. it's it's true well, I, don't, I enjoyed that yeah. <laughs> but it's uh, yeah, it's funny because you said you said something about being in a graveyard all i could think of was our fallen uh dancing our skeletons fallen soldiers, our oh. dancing skeletons man I, was, I had so many cool ideas for that whole thing dang it you know maybe someday it can become a reality 
I still think that someday it's going to become a reality because as tech develops and as Unreal Engine 5 gets uh, rolled out at the end of this year, like they're starting to give you more tools. So it'll allow the lazier among us to still contribute. Right. Well, of course, at that time, it's going to be a lot more saturated too, which is kind of a problem, but it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. That's true. That's true. I'd like to slowly get back into it. I've, I've just been trying to do things one at a time since I have been lately unproductive. So I definitely am in a far better place creatively than I was when we were trying to do that. That's true. I, like you were like in the darkest of valleys t- yeah. <laughs> when we were no. making that true. game. To be true. Fair, ben that... was like literally like a, that's you really took a my... burrito and filled it with dog poop and buried it. He Mike or like, uh, Ben Ben was basically a vegetable at that point. It's really my only <laughs> excuse. But that I yeah. <laughs> so, well, you know, Ben, um, I guess uh, to give a little bit of context to like the listeners and stuff, basically uh it was like sometime last year, I think we were yeah, kind of in the the process of trying to make our own video game and stuff and it was going to be kind of an interesting game that was kind of like uh i don't know kind of an open world type of uh game and battle royale type of thing and but it was like co-op at the same time and i don't know we had a lot of cool ideas for it but just didn't come to fruition but i mean we've still got documents with all those ideas on it yeah I mean, hey, if, even if we just wanted to start off with, like, uh, maybe a little bit more of a simple video game idea, you yeah. know, we could always do something like that, too. Who knows? Exactly. Who knows what the future holds? Who knows? And you always have to look at it as, like, anything, you know, if you learned anything from that or you had a chance to explore your creativity, I mean, that's always positive. Mm-hmm. It's exactly. better just than I just consuming any type of creation process is better than a consumption process in my opinion so true in terms of time spent like that's way better to have spent you know tons of hours on that than to have Mm -hmm. been scrolling facebook and i honestly would encourage um our listeners you know like if there's something you want to try like and you don't know how to do it like use use youtube and use social platforms but like try to use them in a way that like gets you to kind of creative um like get into the creative process and start making things and yeah that's really important i think i think that's that's good or that's for sure i don't know just building skills in general i think is like a really good yeah, it's I just mean, a lot more fulfilling i mean especially in like our current culture i feel like it's one of those things that like people it's too it's too easy to sit down and consume other people's content and like that's yeah. funny because you know yeah. those people that are listening are are consuming content but yeah um they're you know hopefully consuming content that'll drive them to you know create content or create you know something in their lives and like that's mm-hmm. that's something i think um that like i've been more focused on lately is just like trying to like get back into that mindset yeah yeah the like uh i don't like really consuming anything unless i have a like a reason to like turn it around into a creative a creative process somehow like even with like movies and stuff like we went and saw <clears throat> Godzilla versus Kong today and stuff like today I'm like you know okay I watched that movie but how can then I then I turn that into something creative well I'm going to do a movie review on it for my channel after we get it on recording this podcast and stuff and therefore it's kind of turning it into something that's productive I guess yeah. um and I I find way more enjoyment from creating things than consuming things as it is anyway so um, I mean, that's great too because then you save people from a terrible movie experience potentially because like to be honest with you i mean there that's like a very polarized like topic but like the whole kong versus godzilla there's probably a lot of people that would rather just hear a review from you and you save yeah. them you know almost two hours of their time they yeah exactly watch your review and <laughs> get the feedback they can figure out whether it was good or bad and they can go on their day with having spent you know over an hour and a half of just watching the same thing happen over again and i'm I'm not saying that's the case but it's possible i will say i actually enjoyed godzilla godzilla versus kong quite a bit it was uh, it was was actually uh, very good i had a blast watching it have you watched any of like the the monster verse movies joe like uh godzilla 24 i've seen the original godzilla Um, okay that's the extent of my monster besides uh monsters versus aliens and (laughs) uh the extent of your monster <laughs> hey listen it was a good joke i knew it was gonna make you laugh um <laughs> that movie actually isn't too bad not that gonna movie, lie that legit. <laughs> too bad it, it kind of slaps to be honest i'm a uh-huh. i'm a big anime 
or anime animated <laughs> film person. A cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anime is no, not cartoon. Think, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Starts freaking out. <laughs> I triggered somebody there. <laughs> Which yeah. is hilarious because I've literally had like weebs like freak out when you like purposely it's, call it cartoons and stuff just to is, trigger them and then they yeah. fall right into your trap. It's it hilarious. True. <laughs> it is true that they are they are different technically. Like they're both animation, but they are technically different. But I, I've seen people get way too upset. Okay, about so it. picture this. Not exactly correct, but Instead of Webkins, we produce a new product called Weebkins, which is literally just <laughs> everybody's favorite animated characters from their animes, and we just creatively honestly, license them. Honestly, there'd probably be a lot of weebs that would totally buy those up. And there's Absolutely. just literally, a, we'll create a game on Unreal that's that's based off of the Webkins universe, but it'll be called Weebkins, and it will just all be oh anime gosh. people. Mainly. And you can get your anime <laughs> stuffed characters, and you can use a code and you can yeah. participate in the the uh the weebkin universe go around and be the crap out of other weebkins and yeah. <laughs> yeah. collect weebkins yeah collect start them all. relationships with other weebkins like crazy stuff man yeah <laughs> there you go there's another idea i love it i love live it live life with your weebkin <laughs> now that my eardrums are completely blown out <laughs> <laughs> live life again. <laughs> so, in 3D. <laughs> what do you think would be like a really cool video game that hasn't been created yet? Like in general, like uh, the battle royale kind of genre is pretty saturated now and stuff. And I don't know. I feel like that 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 uh, there's still like a lot that could be explored in the battle royale genre of like what people could do. Yeah, but I don't know. I would like to see some video games based off of written material. Mm. Like that would be interesting, yeah. Inspired by books. Mm -hmm. Cuz that's um, kind of what happened with The Witcher, right? Basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they they were books first and then they became a video game yeah. and then obviously yeah. a TV series. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it could work. Like, like an Aragon video game would be amazing. Yeah, like something like that would well, be really if cool. If they actually did it right, then well, it like, could be good. For example, that in a video game medium might even be better than a movie. Yeah, yeah, imagine like, like riding dragons. Yes, just yeah. please make it happen. Well, I'd like to see plus more the magic. Like that. The magic in Aragon could be easily transferred into like a video game um, mode as well. So yeah, so it's like some uh, idea <laughs> like that. I would like imagine to a video game that was open world and literally had like live actors that were integrated into the game, and it was only guaranteed to be live for like a year. And it was literally like a integrated, like immersive experience. Whereas, like, where all NPCs that you interact with are real people. That would be. I would ridiculous. like. To, I would like. That'd be to crazy. See, I would like to see actually. That'd something be fun. Like, um, like if you've ever read or watched Ready Player One, I'd actually like to see something like that with VR technology. Yeah. Would be really, really cool. I'm sure someday um, we'll get to that point. Yeah, where they've got like their like in place treadmills and they're like strapped in yeah. and, and stuff, and they can feel stuff. I think that would be really cool. Like. I, I wonder how hard it would be to, I don't know, like there, there'd obviously be way, probably way too much like risk with that and stuff, but like they, the, like some of the VR technology is like so advanced, like they don't need like cords on them now and yeah. stuff. Like you can just put on the thing, like, and what if it could like just transfer your entire world into some sort of like other like setting or something? Yeah. Yeah. Also but. someday, I mean, I think that like, um, it would be really cool too, like on the whole like line of thought on like having like real life people be the like people that are in place of NPCs. It would be cool too if there was at some point a way to like interpret like um like creative like brain waves or something and basically have you set yourself up in a in a universe environment that's like immersive and have it interpret the way you feel about the game to develop the reality around the game and what you're experiencing, like have like a fully like moldable, like landscape mm -hmm. based on like your moods and your perceptions and like what you want it to be. That would be insane. That'd if be, have, well, yeah. you mean, you mean the way you like to like create a game in your brain? <laughs> it develops off of like your, your interpretation of what you want it to be. That would be ridiculous. Yeah. Where you like create, create your own game. In, in Honestly, someday if, uh, if, 
even you know even if you get past like the ethical concerns like if Neuralink ever becomes a thing like i think that that's gonna definitely have an impact on gaming i was actually gonna i was absolutely gonna bring that up actually because i just watched a video today on Neuralink. Mm. nobody's uh, a little musk supporter <laughs> oh yeah daddy musk take us to the, take us to the to, to mars texas so there you go yeah um, I'll, I'll go live in starbase He's yeah, actually not, telling people to come live there. He's like, they need a hey, yeah, I saw, I saw that. I, I kind of am a little intrigued. I, I think I'm probably going to apply for some Tesla jobs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, um, I don't think that's a bad cool. idea at all. I mean, they're, yeah, yeah, they're hiring for a lot of stuff. You might actually be able to find something degree related for you. Yeah, they don't, yeah. they don't actually require like college degrees for a lot of their jobs and stuff, too. Yeah, a lot of them are manufacturing. Yeah. So. so yeah i'm kind of wondering if i should just pick a skill that i want to hone and run with it and try to just get a job that way because like that would be sweet i feel like working for uh, spacex or or tesla yeah really musk in general would be a really cool experience mm -hmm. oh yeah i'm sure i'm sure elon musk will start like starting up all sorts of different stuff down there yeah. so it'd be... oh yeah i mean i think he's he's incredibly creative so i think that there's going to be a lot of things that come out of that area i think that's I think that's honestly like a new creative hotspot, yeah. especially with the mm -hmm. migration from California um, of a lot of people. Like it's one of those things that like, I I think that a lot of people move for tax reasons. Like I was listening to like some Joe Rogan earlier and like, he was just like giving all the reasons like he moved. And like a lot of that has to do with like creative, like stifling. And also, um, I mean, he even admitted it. He's not, he's not really conservative i'd say at all mm -hmm. but like no. he still admitted that like hollywood's extreme leftist views were just stifling all the creativity and in ruining the culture of comedy and yeah. like when you have something that's so like um you know such a like a militant I ideology um it, it stifles creativity and i think that's really cool to like see a lot of people moving to texas because like some people get worried about the you know the political like marring of like what texas has and like bringing the negative parts of california to it but i think ultimately like the people that moved a lot of them learned their lessons and, and they really do want texas to be the best of both worlds and like a balance of conservative principles but like also like you know free free thought and creativity all all those those good things that like are positive mm -hmm. coming from a creative uh, space like Hollywood. Yeah. I hope so. I hope that's yeah. the case. I hope so too. I mean, I really would hate to see it get contaminated, but I, I think Musk is like a good, uh, both a good, like social and entrepreneurial like aspect, like in personality that's brought to Texas. So like, I, I'm really hopeful that like that whole, that whole uh, venture, whether it's ends up being like a, a futuristic city or just a really good influence through technology and like development of people. Mm -hmm. Like I think overall the impact's gonna be phenomenal. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean he's he's asking for all sorts of like, you know, inventors and uh I guess innovative people in general to move down there. And it would be really cool to live in that type of environment, you know, where you're just yeah. surrounded by people who have inspiration and all that stuff like that'd be really cool so i see yeah. him as like the uh like the batman billionaire creative like model and i yeah. really see somebody like jeff bezos is like a lex <laughs> Luthor character. Yeah. Um, I mean, he kinda he's funny. literally bald so <laughs> yeah i mean honestly if, if he played lex Luthor, he's actually ripped too so he actually would be the perfect lex Luthor. like yeah. somebody should approach him and uh, ask him to yeah. somebody needs to make like some sort of like animated video of like elon musk battling uh, <laughs> bezos or something more like an epic i wish I, I wish i yeah. was an animator because like that i feel like that would be crazy viral and like oh, dude, i have so many ideas be. of where i could take it yeah so, uh, it probably would yeah, get, go viral you do animation for sure. and you want to collaborate let's make a uh a musk and uh, bezos superhero battle mm -hmm. yeah yeah i mean uh, <laughs> that'd be amazing that'd be really cool that'd be really cool i'd totally help get something like that going for sure <laughs> that'd be sweet i think i'd be fun to take like really big uh kind of like icons of our current like like present day and like take that mm -hmm. and then basically fictionalize their lives and make yeah. a whole comic strip out of it i think that would be cool yeah Mm -hmm. there was somebody that i knew that was doing something kind of like that but i can't remember who it was but there's like some youtube channels that do that type of stuff too like uh epic rap battles of histories like 
hilarious. Oh yeah, they, ERB they, is they, like classic. I, yeah. I love ERB. Oh man, they've, they've been around forever too. But yeah. oh man, their stuff I mean, is I so good. I still feel like they get pretty good, uh, like traffic and stuff. Too. Yeah, I mean, it's mm-hmm. like they they're creative and like it's an original idea and like I don't think I mean I've never watched really any rap battles besides that like from history just because like i know they're like the ogs of it like yeah, they, yeah. they're the most creative and they definitely like i they've got some pretty good videos mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah sure i like seeing elon musk and Jeff Bezos one yeah yeah i think that'd be a really good combination actually so i yeah i'm surprised they haven't done something like that yet too. yeah that's actually i'm very surprised too since yeah. they're they're one uh what is it it's like epic lloyd uh, one of their guys is like straight up bald. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe we should try to get something like that going then. Try. I, yeah. I could probably find some animators pretty easily, to be honest. So yeah, it'd be it'd be fun. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, but yeah. So I was watching a video today on Neuralink because I didn't know too much about it. I've heard him yeah. talk about it um, on Joe Rogan's podcast, I think. But I think the most interesting concept from that entire thing, it really reminded me of Blade Runner and kind of what they do with the replicants is this whole idea of implanting, like talking about like uploading memories to a com- the computer inside your brain and then like re-uploading them to AI or to like a robot yeah. or yep. another body. I was like, yep. to even be able to do that, like, I, I don't know, I feel like there's some ethical issues with that that come with that but it would still be really fascinating to me Um, Mm -hmm. because like that's the whole idea with like blade runner is like a lot all the replicants have implanted memories yeah they have these memories are implanted in them some of them i mean i think realistically i think that what you'll see initially is you're gonna see like you're not gonna see like full transference i i don't know if it's ever gonna be possible i mean i don't i don't think it's personally possible for like full transference of like a consciousness to like a, a machine but what I do think is possible is for um, programs and like for technology to be developed where it interpret human like human like um, brain signaling and other things and is able to like d- develop and learn from that. And I, I mean, I think that like you also like you you may be able to like eventually like modify your brain to interpret more like electrical based signals because yeah. like well, that's what the brain has all now. kinds of electrical signals flowing yeah. through it already, which is what makes the feasibility of like pairing electronics with it possible mm. and that's kind of what the what they're at right now is like that that base level where they're trying yeah. to figure out what the like the neurons and everything else which is really i mean i think some close like level interaction isn't really unethical per se but i think the whole like level of like messing to messing with it to a certain degree there's like that fine line where i think they used to cross into like the the ethics um question yeah. well i yeah. think like yeah I and mean, the fascinating part of that is like if they ever did make it to that point, like say you uploaded your consciousness or your, your memories into a computer and then you die. Like if those memories were implanted in something else, would that be you or would that be somebody else just sharing your memories? Yeah. Be really I like to think that know. there's some type of soul element that's irre- <clears throat> like irreplicable. It's like right. your own version of an NFT. It's, it's, there's only one of you. Right. Um, and so like no matter whether you take a picture of you or whether you copy an essence or a, a part of you that you're really irreplicable because there's only like one one token that's you yeah. <laughs> right, and that's and that's why you, like use some cryptocurrency terminology I, I think that like ultimately like there's one of you i think that there's possibly going to be technology to the point where they can replicate almost everything of you but i mean even if it's 99.9% what you think you are, it's still not technically you. So, yeah. mm-hmm. Right, which is yeah, like cloning an individual, the cloned individual would not be you. Yeah. Because of that reason. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if we'll ever be able to, to uh, successfully that. create something like that. I don't know. Not at least in our lifetime. Yeah, I, I mean, mean... The thing is, too, you have to think whether it's successful or not do you want that? Yeah, yeah well, I know I don't want that. Like, I, 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 yeah, be, I definitely don't scary either. to me. I think the thing that that freaks me out the most is that just the idea, like it would be so easy for like, I don't know, some government crackhead to get their hands on all that type of crap, uh, that crap and just like do all sorts of crazy stuff with it. And I really wouldn't have any interest in that at all. Do you you guys see the movie, uh, the movie us? No, I haven't seen that. No. Okay. Uh, There's, there's some interesting things to do with like, 
like doppelgangers or mm-hmm. what's that movie again? It's uh, Jordan Peele's second movie he made. So oh he made, yeah, he made I think you actually lent us. that to me. I still have never watched that. Yeah. Us is very good, but it's got it's got some interesting things to do with like other people that are like a different person but missing something, and it's mm-hmm. it's just it's very interesting. So yeah, um, I mean, that's been a pretty commonly explored theme in a lot of sci-fi in the past. Is like you know like what like what defines you, what what makes yeah. you, well, and right. like I mean, how how far are people going to go to try to generate a copy of themselves? Like mm-hmm. I, I think realistically, I think there's a lot of other Um, ways to put the human creative like towards a better more like ethical purposing and i think that like i think that like there's a lot of a lot to be done still with like ai and like other technologies that are a little scary but still more on the the realm of ethicality because they don't they don't don't, like stray into like (laughs) biological right like we are so yeah yeah i just don't i just don't think that it's possible to like take the essence of who someone is and like put it into something no, else. I, I don't think that's ever going to be able. To I mean, if you believe yeah. in like the, the existence of, of somebody's soul, then I think that it's got to be impossible. Yeah. yeah. It's I don't, like, I, like, you I, know, I don't cause think... like if you view it as like a vessel for your soul, you mm-hmm. could maybe make another vessel, but if you don't have another soul, then that's just going to be scary. You're just going to have like yeah. organ yeah. tissue. Well, and that's like, that's, yeah. that's another thing where Blade Runner comes up is the, all the replicants are considered, beings without souls but they have yeah. memories they have right, all these right. things and so it, it leads you to those questions of like what makes you a, a human like what makes you a human and like kind of the overarching thing is like a yeah. soul is kind of what makes you human but also not necessarily so it's interesting but i i mean personally i think that like a soul is something you can't replicate that's like one thing you can't you can never take from someone you could make yeah. like i i believe that at some point you could make like a shell of somebody um, yeah yeah i think that could with, be very possible with, for like sure with the, even with their memories and and everything else but they wouldn't be that person yeah like you would be yep. they, would, they would be an empty copy of a person yeah because they wouldn't yep. have like that that integral part yeah um but yeah i mean it's it's interesting for sure <laughs> which which honestly is also like what separates us so much from like uh you know from animals and stuff too because we like animals don't have that human thing about them where it's like they don't have like a sense of moral moral guidance or anything or you yeah. know they don't question that about reality or anything or well they don't right and but i mean animals are also extremely intelligent though which is the fascinating part is but they don't have like a they, you mean like they don't have like a sense of what's right like right well we're no, able to yeah. interact we're able to interact and shape and like mold our environment and I, animals aren't so capable of doing that like they can in small mm-hmm. ways the levels that humanity can like a beaver can build a dam and uh well, that's an instinct of what beavers have yeah you have you have you have things that they can do but like they they follow like it's like much more base laws than like humans. Humans so do like what a, they want, whereas like a- animals follow a kind of a, a biological code. It's like a biological yeah. code almost. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, like I really do look at animals like, and honestly, I look at some of the things human humans do as like being somewhat of a biological like code. I mean, I think there are some base things. Oh, yeah. that like Just are like functionally like, I mean, that's, that's why, that's why computer science is so cool is it's like a, it's like a, you know, a, a something that's created, creating something that you know, runs in a similar fashion, you know, objectively, yeah. like, mm-hmm. like it very much logically. I mean, and that's the thing is like, I don't know, like there's, there's a lot of cool things I think to be done still with like artificial intelligence to where like, we mm-hmm. don't need to mess around with our human bodies too much. Like, I mean, it's good to be healthy and like try to be your best self, but I mean, that doesn't involve manipulating or like, really like i think modifying like the base of who we are yeah Yeah. i'm much more interested in like the whole idea of like uh you know modifying like body parts and stuff like cybernetics yeah like cybernetics and all that type of stuff i i love that i'm so fascinated by that and just seeing how much that has like advanced over the past even just like the past few years is just insane it's crazy even if like like, yeah like people people can have like pretty highly functioning like 
you know, fake ar- fake limbs and stuff now. It's just like, like wow. Imagine if they got to that point, though, where you could, like, control every finger individually. Yeah. I feel like something like Neuralink, I think that's actually the main purpose of it, is to actually help people with, like, disabilities. Yeah, um, and I mean, I, I feel like that's yeah. the best form of technology, is, like, who yeah. would, wouldn't want to have function of their arms if they're missing it? Like, who who right. doesn't want limb or motor function? Yeah. And I mean, also, too, like, I mean, that's that's where I lean, like, especially when it comes to, like, biotechnology is, like, I have no problem with like being able to like grow an eye or a heart. Like if we can figure out technology like that, like that's great. Cause like people with like, you know, damaged valves in their heart can get a replacement more rapidly and things like yep. things like that, that don't, don't yeah. challenge or uh, desecrate, you know, like the fundamentals of like who we are. Yeah. That's where I think the brain gets a little difficult is like, you have to cross that, that, you know, that that's like the age old, like um, kind of like, that's an age old like like philosophers question you know like what what part of us like where what part of us is our essence like it, mm-hmm. most people suspect it comes out of the brain but like it's not just the brain's neurochemical functions there's more to it than that because i mean they just it's just it's deeper it's a deeper level i think than than we can really fathom yeah. right now. i think there's so much like hypothesization that like is doesn't necessarily go in ways that are really just like concrete yeah, I agree. I I, th- I find it very interesting how, like, uh, it's it's so weird how like you can feel like emotions within your your body and stuff, but at the same time, like you can feel your head thinking. You know, like there's two different yeah. things going on there, which you can feel directly in yourself, which is why people will, like say that like you know things like emotions come from the heart or whatever and stuff. Right. Which, well, like yeah. It you know whether it does or not i don't know like <laughs> i don't know yeah. if it comes from like your soul from like something deeper within or what but I mean, it's just interesting. there are some things that are biologically i mean like when you're happy and sad like a lot of that is related to your neurochemicals but like i yeah. think that sometimes like there's a deeper aspect of you that like it, your thoughts can lend to that and your thoughts can lend to those releases but like i don't think that it just ends with with neurochemicals i think yeah. it's something that's a deeper process than that 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 people either are i honestly a lot of people i think are, are just unwilling to conjecture but i mean it's it's definitely there like i mm-hmm. mean yeah there's your brain's controlling there's... all all of your systems and you're still able to like think about so many different things and mm-hmm. sometimes think about multiple things kind of at once it's like yeah we, and we don't even utilize like barely any of our brain capacity mm-hmm. yeah that's true that's not true not all of it though we don't use that's that's been proven that's been a proven fallacy that it's very common it's very uh it's been like popularized culture and everything that we we only use a small percentage of our brain but i mean scientists have proven that like our brain like unless you have major neurological issues all parts of your brain there's some neurons that are firing huh oh yeah i'm sure that yeah, as much as that's something that's an exciting thing to believe that we have like this unlimited untapped like 80 percent of our brain is untapped like that's that's not entirely true i mean we can develop more like uh aggressively like interactive pathways through learning and through like personal like mental like development like the the brain is not per se a muscle but you should treat it the same way like if you have a if you have a brain that digests junk food or Mm -hmm. Uh, short form content continuously like your brain does have physiological like actual physical effects to that so it's the same way like you if you have a bad diet and you consume fast food your body gets fat your brain will deteriorate and your brain will slow down if you don't exercise it's like i mean it's yeah it's just another part of your body but i mean back to the whole concept of like soul i mean i think there's a whole there's a whole other layer that is just inaccessible to human technology and in may never be detectable in a scientific way right yeah, yeah. No, i agree so what do you think happens because you know like how sometimes people like you know they kind of like whatever like die or whatever like in a hospital and then they like bring them back you know what i mean yeah. like you hear stories about that all the time and some people have these stories of like oh you know i saw heaven or whatever or you know the, there's all all those crazy stories there's been a lot yeah like, like, do you think that's actually a thing? 
because in order for that to happen, your soul would have to leave your body if you actually saw heaven or whatever. But like, does it get sucked back <laughs> down to your body? Yeah, or right, exactly. like... <laughs> I I think that I think that there's like there is a there's a possibility that that could occur. Um, what I think that it is mainly is is uh we have a we have basically something that's called like DMT receptors. There, that's a, a molecule called, called dimethyltryptamine. And, and basically like that, that molecule um, is re responsible for like uh, hallucinations. It's found in really, really high quantities when people do die. It's, it really mm. concentrates and it gets released um, during like extremely traumatic, like, like body ending experiences. Like if somebody's mm. like bleeding out, like they've noticed like that there's big releases and like when they do um, like a, a, like a, an inspection later like that that is a molecule that's like found in really high levels um in the brain after death so the thought process hmm. is that when somebody comes close to death or is approaching something that's gonna cause a fatality that releases in their brain and causes them to kind of like a hallucinogenic trip um and and frankly i i think that there's there's more to be said for some people just seeing a, a very it's a very, very, very vivid imagery because, like, brain, um, I the brain's capable of producing some incredible imagery yeah. that that doesn't necessarily exist. And I mean, the thing is, I mean, just too, think about like, dreams and stuff, right? Right. Like, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can't you can't necessarily discount the fact that there may be some other like supernatural element, but I think that like it's also it's like just like I think that neurochemicals don't explain everything going on in the human body. They're still a big factor. So you kind of yeah. just have to like, look at it and say, okay, like it very could, it could very possibly just be a, you know, a chemical release. And you know, what's deeper beyond that is something that people aren't going to be able to describe. Cause like, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, if you like, depending on what you believe, you know, if you're a Christian, like you obviously believe that your soul goes somewhere else after you die, but like, if if your soul it goes like you would that it would be kind of like a permanent process like it's gone right. gone yeah yeah so it can't necessarily but also i mean i'm not going to make that claim to know that that's the case because i right but i mean, yeah. I don't know. but yeah also, exactly there yeah. are people also that that um you know there also is like a, some belief in like a, a something like purgatory which is like a place between like a waiting room yeah like a place between <laughs> the an waiting ad, right, room which, you just right, died uh, <laughs> yeah yeah exactly Tap and your it's fingers, like, uh, you're like oh which one did i make it in? <laughs> Right. It's it's like that whole idea, but like that could also be another thing. It's like people have this idea of like purgatory, which is like a place between an afterlife and and current life, and maybe that's what they are seeing is something along those lines. You, you know? do you do yeah. wonder. It does make you wonder. You know, like regardless of like what what you believe, there's still like a lot to be said. Like especially if you don't believe in anything, then there's not really much hope for you there. <laughs> but if you yeah. do believe in something, that's a whole nother interesting concept is like, and I, and I, I wouldn't lean towards yeah. there being a waiting room, but like you have to think what happens to all the people that have died <laughs> thus far. Yeah. <laughs> if there's a finite, if there's a finiteness to this earth then like, what are those people like, what are those people doing now? Like they just make it straight through to their respective you know location mm -hmm. like are they going straight to heaven or straight to hell or They're is there chilling. some type of process or or is there some area that's designated for people before everything you know ends i mean mm -hmm. it really depends on your perspective about what happens when you die yeah, yeah. yeah. i hope not because i hate waiting so it'd be really boring to be in a waiting room for like thousands of years or whatever waiting room for like a million years josiah's years personal life. hell even if he doesn't have to go there <laughs> <laughs> when you're impatient I hope there's at least snacks or something jeez <laughs> yeah i'm gonna get hungry dude I, mean, I to be honest like that's another dude, question you what? know like do you do you have a material body immediately yeah exactly like, like, I'm are, you, too. are you even gonna be hungry are you just yeah. a little floating wisp or what are you <laughs> what, yeah, what, what if though what if all these people that have these near-death experiences they go into this place that's like purgatory, but they're actually there for like thousands of years. And that's only like two seconds or like. Two <laughs> yeah. They're yeah. There for well, just like I guess if you can think of it being like my whole thought process is that 
it's all outside of our our perception of space and time anyways so that yeah could very well exactly be. yeah what's ten thousand yeah. years for us may be nothing to people outside mm-hmm. of space and time so like right exactly. we're our lives literally years are measured just because we age and we wrinkle and we grow older and like our our consciousness like does develop and like we we change but like that may not be true like if uh, outside of this this reality like right here right now which is also why i don't think that time travel is ever going to be a thing because yeah. like people people look at time travel as like they look at time as almost like a mechanical thing like you yeah. can wind back a clock so why can't you wind back time time, you know? time is a construct like but time isn't necessarily like even a thing it's just a thing that we've invented in a way and a, stuff a construct, you know? right. yeah we've made, we've made time yeah and, and i think when with like time travel they're talking about like been literally bending space and time like bending uh i don't know like yeah it's I, so I, interesting to me because time only matters when there's an expiration of time if there's not an end point and there's not a like a completion of what we call time then time really is irrelevant yeah yeah yep. exactly. which is super weird like yeah, our our true. what the the fi- like our finiteness is the only thing that makes that relevant because mm-hmm. if yeah. i knew i was gonna live forever then time i wouldn't even right. care about setting constructs for how long i was going to live it would be irrelevant well right like yeah. if you were living in an immortal body on earth you wouldn't care about the time that's passing because it has no effect on you like i mean i yeah. i do like right. the saying time is money when you're thinking about like your uh like when, when you think about like how like perishable you are in th- this life like Time mm-hmm. is money, and I think it's like valuable. I think it's like the number one currency. I think that people like get it twisted and like think of other things, but like that's like the most valuable thing you ever have in, in this True. life. True. But if you yeah. lose the time aspect, then like, and you can do whatever, then like something else becomes the currency. Like what something else is more valuable than your yeah. time after that. Yep. Time really is kind of like a a big bank account, and it like you don't ever add in more money to it it's just so no, going you, st- down. you start with it it can only get shorter <laughs> yeah from the minute that you're born and conscious and in, in this life it is it is a trickling bank account yeah and that's true. fine you you can invest it and have big returns in other ways but you can mm-hmm. only manipulate your time and create other forms of currency with it yeah whether that's yeah. whether that's like time with like i mean that's whether it's something that beneficial like a relationship that you formed or whether it's physical money or it's uh Mm -hmm. you know something that you've done spiritually with your time like i mean there's so many different ways that you can use it but like you can really only convert it into other things you can never get more of it so that's why it's the most Mm -hmm. valuable is like it's literally you get a limited amount of it some people get less than a a lot less than others and it's something that you know literally could be like a day supply or years and years out yeah it's a, that's about. a really interesting concept that was explored in this movie called end time i don't know if you guys have watched that or not it's oh, a yeah. justin timberlake movie yeah, yeah i never watched that i was going yeah, it's to. actually a, it's actually a pretty good movie um but it, it, that's a very interesting concept that they explore because like rich people like they have way more time that's like i mean that literally is the currency of the movie and, and the movie yeah. is like time so like the rich people they have like hundreds and hundreds of years added to their, their life and stuff and because of that they live their lifestyles completely different than like the poor people who have only like weeks or months or even days and stuff and um so it's just a really interesting concept that that movie explored so mm-hmm. it's a, it's actually a decent movie too so it if is, you're looking for is. something good to watch then yeah, I re- recommend it. So, yeah, it's pretty cool stuff. Um, so your weekly recommends. Yeah, you know what? Th- that'll be my that'll be my weekly recommend. <laughs> in time, in stars uh, Justin Timberlake. I don't remember who else is in it, but it's 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 good. There is a female stuff. lead, but just I forgot her name. Yeah. Well, do you remember her name? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I've never I watched it, so I, I'm exempt from this. <laughs> uh it was uh oh it was amanda seafried oh well there you go wow that's amazing (laughs) that's amazing i just remember that was justin timberlake because like that was like back when i had a 11 yeah like that was that was when he was like just like he was a big deal at that time so it's did you have a big crush on justin is that what you're about to say no oh okay (laughs) Ben, don't project. <laughs> well, 
Whoa. You might have, but <laughs> so uh what's uh what's your weekly recommend? Me? Yeah. Um you know, in keeping with the time theme. Oh, okay. Go with about time, which Josiah still has not <clears throat> seen. It's one of the most beautiful movies ever made. It's a very, very, a very, very touching story about uh, living life to the fullest and, and making the most out of the life that you have. Um, even though time travel is an element in that movie, it's more of like foregoing all of that because it doesn't matter. And wow. the life you have itself does matter. It's, it's just really good. It's really it's beautiful. Really deep, deep movie. So that, that would be mine. Got there a, you go. Uh, About time, in time. What do you got, Joe? <laughs> out of time. Um, <laughs> well, I'm afraid we're out of time. I'm just kidding. Um, I don't really watch many movies. Um, it doesn't have to be a movie. It could be a book. Sounds or, good. Or, I, yeah, yeah just, you could literally recommend anything. Yeah, you don't even I have just, to recommend uh, anything if you don't want to. I, was <laughs> I just read the autobiography of Gucci Mane, um, the rapper. And uh, yeah, no, goes his real name's uh, Roderick Davis, and uh, it's, it's a good read if you want to learn about an Atlanta rapper and you also want to feel better about yourself. Because whenever you think that you've wasted time, just remember there's other people out there that spent years in prison. So true, yeah, <laughs> oh, that is true. It's terrible, but sometimes I think it's good to read. Uh, it's read good to read autobiographies, regardless of the person and like the quality of the person's character. Because like whether they did better things than you or worse things than you, you can always find something that you can apply to your life and not necessarily like justify or make yourself feel better, but it still gives you an idea, you know, like people are broke for 40 years and make millions of dollars. Some people are broke forever, but have, you know, incredible like um, intellectual currency and other currency that, you know, is not necessarily just like related to direct like money. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know. I mean, I think that was like a good, a good read for me to just kind of remind myself that like don't have it the best don't have it the worst and uh give me more perspective to like hit the drawing board for you know where i want to go with my next few years because heck yeah back to the whole five-year plan it's uh it's important it's it's it good to have a plan but don't get too consumed or like caught up in in doing you know what you want to do just be open to opportunities and i Flexible. think that yeah, I think that as long as you're willing to work hard, I think that that like makes it a lot more like open too. So. Yeah, for sure. Yep, exactly. Yep, yeah. I think that's that's good stuff. Um, so, with that being said, that is going to be it for this week. Uh, thank you for coming on once again, Joe. And uh, yeah, we will catch you all next week. Have a great week, and we will talk to you all later. Bye.